You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode on entrepreneurship, and what I'd like to talk about this week is selling your business. And I've been given some really helpful questions about this um, that I think could be useful to to tackle. So I will just go through each of the questions and and see if I can uh, provide some feedback on them on the basis of my experience. And just as a quick background, uh, I sold my business um, in 2010. Um, it was a sale that started originally in 2006, um, and we made the agreement in 2007, and I had a three-year earnout period, which I'll explain in more detail. Um, and so now I, I have uh, completely sold my business, and I, I got a lot of experience in the process, um, which I hope is helpful. I think it's a really important topic um, to think about if you are an entrepreneur. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's go to the questions. So the first question is just why sell your business? And I think that is um, a really important question. In fact, there is an argument that has been made in the book um, Rework uh, by Jason Fried that if you are starting a business, you should really start it without any intention to sell because you should only ever develop a business that you really love so much that you want to continue doing it indefinitely into the future. And and he makes the argument in that book that uh, it's actually a really unhealthy attitude to um, to start a business with the the aim of one day selling it because it means that you're not really you're not really enjoying just doing the business in itself and that that's what will give you um, real pleasure. And I understand where he's coming from. Um, it's certainly true that there are people who um, start businesses um, just with the idea of uh, cashing out. And then don't have any fun in doing the business. Um, but I must say I disagree with him because I actually did start my business with the idea of selling it. And I still really, really felt passionately about the business that I developed. Uh, but I always had in mind that one day I would want to do something else with life, do other things. I didn't really like the idea of just having one business all the way through my life. Um I thought it would be a five-year project uh, to develop and sell this business. It turned into a 10-year project, but I did start out with the idea of selling, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I started in the late 90s uh, during the absolute peak of the internet boom when there were a lot of people, young people, um, starting businesses and developing them with venture capital, eventually going for an initial public offering, floating their, their business on the stock market and uh, making a lot of money and developing large um, businesses in the process. I mean, of course, that changed massively. Almost as soon as I started the business in 2000, the, uh, the internet boom crashed. And I think in many ways, uh, what came afterwards was a much healthier development of businesses because people were less focused on getting money from investors and more focused on developing their own business themselves. And that's what I did as well. So I think it is true that if you are just focused on selling your business and earning out, then you're not interested so much in generating value for others, which is what's going to make your business successful. But there's nothing wrong with selling per se. And there are, I think, strong arguments to sell. I mean, ultimately, nobody lives forever and something is going to happen to your business. If you think about it, there's only a number of things that can happen. You can simply stop trading and wind down the business, um, or you can do some kind of sale. And there's various um, ways in which you might think about uh, selling the business. So unless you intended to just one day stop trading, then ultimately you are going to sell the business um, in one way or another. And so I think it's helpful to think about that um, in advance and to really plan for it because it takes a long time, um, whichever route you choose. So that would be my argument as to why you should sell. There are also lots of other reasons why it could make sense to sell. In particular, um, at least in the UK, there are real tax advantages from selling your business. Um, and this is not a, a good thing, uh, but it's just a fact of life that unfortunately the tax system encourages the growth of big business. 
because as an entrepreneur, you know, you can potentially um, have much better tax circumstances from at one point selling your business than from just continuing to take money from your business over the long term. Even though incorporating um, as a limited company and uh, doing various other things, there's lots of, of tax advantages. The tax system still incentivizes you to try and sell your business at some stage. And that's one reason why we do have the growth of big business, because of basically because of government policy. Another reason why I think it's worth thinking about selling is because it is a way of achieving more financial freedom in your life. And that was really important to me. That was one of the, the sort of motivations I had about going into entrepreneurship was to be able to try and find a way of cashing out of my business and having the financial freedom that that would give me. And if you can do it, you know, that's a fantastic thing to have in life. And so it was a combination for me of having the opportunity to do other things in life and also being able to to get the value out of the business um, and to have the financial freedom that that would give me. So those are the reasons that I think it's worth at least uh, thinking about selling your business as an entrepreneur. So if you do want to sell, uh, how do you find buyers for the business? Well, I guess this is where it, it, it might be useful to look at the options that you've got for selling the business. I mean, the first, I guess, would be to turn to try and turn the business into a passive investment where you grow your team and you grow the staff working for you to a point where you can essentially have the management take over your business and run that business. You're not really selling it. You would still be the owner, the business owner, but you'd have a management team in place running your business. I certainly thought about that. There are tax disadvantages in some ways. Um, but I guess the question for me was really, you know, you've got to be able to find people who are good enough to run your business in the way that you think it needs to be run. And you've got to be able to step back and actually do other things with your life and so forth. I didn't, I, I think it's really hard to find people to take over your business. If you're running a business like mine was, which was a consultancy doing quite technical analysis it's it, it's not a very easy product based business other businesses could be much more amenable to this but i don't really have a lot of experience in this particular approach i do think the questions that come to mind for me if you try to do this is will you be able to let it go and will it really ever be a passive income stream for you or will you just be continuing to you know worry about the business to have it taking up your mental headspace and if that's the case you know, what real advantages is, uh, are there for you. But if you can make it work, that's one approach. Um, just turn it into a passive income stream. So it's effectively an investment that's sitting there that you haven't exactly sold, but it is giving you an income stream through the profits generated in the, in the business um, that you then either receive dividends on or some other arrangement that you come to. The next option in terms of selling your business would be to have effectively a management buyout or some kind of succession plan where the people who are working for you take over the business and pay you out and buy you out and i again i've personally not seen a lot of good examples of this i know that it is a long process it can take decades for this to really work um and the main prop the main sort of question here is how are the management going to buy you out what cash do they have normally you know if, if they're just individuals who are working for you they're not necessarily going to have the cash to to pay you anything significant for the business so they will have to get some kind of business loan themselves in order to do it and and this is a complicated process um, and again you know all the time while you're negotiating it you're also working with these people and i i should imagine that that is quite difficult to do so again, I can't really speak to that so much because I don't have a lot of experience. All I can say is I've also not seen a lot of good examples of how that's worked um, myself. It seems to be one of those things that people think they will plan for and then they carry on working basically until they can't work anymore. Um, and and um, it's not really a management buyout. Um, uh, it's, it doesn't really give them any significant cash in that process. The next thing that you can do to sell your business is to go for a trade sale. And this would be where you sell your business to another company 
typically a bigger company who are going to have the cash to buy it. And that's what I did. Um, and in terms of how you find a, a buyer for, um, for your business, the, the company that bought mine, we had already developed a long-term relationship with. We'd done lots of work together. They knew the value of our work. We'd, we were effectively a supplier to them of these technical uh, consultancy and uh, computer simulation modeling services that they then used in their bigger scale projects because um, it was a big engineering company that bought my firm. And, and that, I think, is uh, I personally have most experience in this because this is what I did. And I think in many ways this is the um, easiest and best thing that you can do um, in terms of selling your business. So you can find a larger company in the same field as, yourself, as, as your business that would benefit from having your products or services as part of their offering um, who are then, and who also would have cash uh, to buy your business. Another route um, that you can use um, is effectively to float your business, to go for an initial public offering um, on the stock market. And this is something that um, a lot of people think about as being the kind of growth potential of, um, for their business. And in, in fact, this is what I initially thought um, would be the kind of logical thing to go for for my business, because we were a kind of technology oriented consultancy and we were doing something quite innovative and again I'd seen that route be used by other people in my generation um, and uh, so I figured well if they can do it I can do it too. Actually when you look at um, floating um, your company even if it's on a smaller alternative investment market it's still a very very difficult and stressful thing to do. And everyone I know who's gone down this route has really suffered in the process. Personally, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. You come under a huge amount of pressure. There's an enormous amount of regulatory um, and auditing and, and reporting um, crap that you have to do as part of this process. Um, you're also very, very much tied in to performance measures of the business and to what you need to do um, to show after the sale um, that, that you are achieving targets in order for you to actually realize any value. And you're not likely to get very much cash up front at all. It, it will be options that will vest at a certain point in time in the future. So basically, you have to stick around and show that the business is going to perform. If you can do it, there, is, you know, there are potentially big cash incentives involved in doing that. But I think it's a really difficult and stressful route to take. So I guess my experience is mainly um, talking more along the lines of selling the business in a trade sale, because that's what I did. OK, so the next question is, when is a good time to sell your business? And this is difficult to answer because this is obviously going to um, vary from business to business, uh, depending on the specifics. I think certainly one thing to really look at is reaching profitability. Um, that is going to determine the value, as we'll talk about more in a minute. But you're really only going to be in a position to negotiate the sale of business when you are making either making good profits or you have a very clear roadmap to profitability that is believable and predictable. Um, but really, it boils down to um, the fact that you're profitable. And one of the key things about this in terms of, of when you might uh, want to sell is it's only going to work um, selling your business if you sell at a time when you have options, when you don't have to sell, you're not desperate to sell, and you don't really just you're not really just selling because you want to get out. I have met a lot of small business owners who have um, little consultancy businesses or whatever, and they dream about selling their business, but they don't really have anything to sell. They haven't reached profitability, and they don't really have a good reason for selling, except that they just want to give up. They want to get out of the business. And that certainly isn't going to give you any kind of compelling negotiation um, at all. So it's, it's certainly important that you have options uh, that you don't have to sell. For example, in my case, we actually walked away from the negotiation to sell the business for about a year because the price wasn't good enough and we didn't have to sell because the business was profitable and we were able to just continue taking profit out of the business 
um, for the uh, indefinite future. Now, this was before uh, 2008, before the recession hit, which changed everything for everyone. Um, so we were very lucky with regards to the timing, but it was clear that we had a profitable business and that we would be able to continue taking profit out and even potentially look for other buyers in the future without being in any particular hurry. And that gave us a very strong negotiating position and it meant that we could come back um, to the negotiation after a year still in the same position and still um, you know, very much uh, able to sell only if it worked for us. The other options you might have are looking into having more than one buyer interested in your business. You might look into not only either selling it or continuing to take profit out as we did, or alternatively develop your team to a point where you might be able to turn it more into a passive income stream for yourself or a management buyout or some of the other types of options that I mentioned. But that's really important is that, you know, in terms of timing, uh, you need to be profitable. You need to, to be in a position where you don't have to sell. And I think the, the relationships that you develop are really important too. Um, I was able to sell my business because we had developed strong partnering uh, relationships with lots of other companies that could potentially have been buyers of our business. Every time you work together with a bigger company in the same field or a company that has more cash in the same field, you're dealing with a potential buyer of your business. And you, if you develop good working relationships, then you build up trust and those people get to see the value that you provide. And that really helps the negotiation because you're not starting from zero. You've already got something very valuable that um, the other um, party in the negotiation knows about. Uh, so I think that's another key thing is um, developing relationships with potential buyers is really important before you consider selling. The next question is how you actually value your business and what price you can expect to get for selling your business. And this is something that you can definitely read quite a lot of um, stuff about. I think I read a book called How to Value Your Business, and there's lots of books like that out there. And there are various ways of valuing a business and various theories about it and so forth. But essentially, it really boils down to the fact that what the value of your business depends on your future profits. What you're selling is an income stream. It's a, a going concern that provides income, and that income is profit, not your overall sales level, but your profit. So if somebody wants to buy your business, they're buying it because it will continue making profit into the future. And the, the level of certainty about that profit and the amount of profit is what really what's going to determine you know, how valuable the business is. It's going to end up being some kind of multiple of your current level of profit based on your last um, year of accounts and your projections and, and uh, um, sales figures and so forth for the year coming. So what you're going to get for the business is some multiple of how much profit you make. The more um, secure and confident and predictable those profits are, the, the better opportunity you have for getting a higher multiple of profits. If the profits are very insecure and unpredictable, you won't get a high multiple. And that's really what your negotiation is going to boil down to. Because with small businesses, you know, there's so many um, unknowns and so many guesses involved in what your future level of profitability is going to be that you can't have some kind of formula about it. But the obvious thing is the more profitable you are, the, the better your negotiating position is going to be um, for selling the business. You will also have the value of the assets in the business. So, for example, you may have particular technology or software or whatever, and those things in themselves may have a value. Um, so, in other words, it may be possible that your company is being bought just because of the technology that it owns and that you know, the, that's going to be used in a slightly different context and that the company um, that's buying your company is not so much interested in your business as a going concern. But I think that's less um, likely to be the case with small businesses. And it's more likely to be that, you know, they are buying um, a, the potential of your business as an income stream. The next question I had was what to expect from the negotiation that you have um, about selling your business. 
And this is something that gets quite complicated. But the basic thing that is going to happen is that the buyer of the business wants to have as much security and predictability and confidence in that future income stream of profits that they can have. And their approach to the negotiation is going to be all about securing that future income stream as much as they can. And that will typically involve some kind of earn out period. What that means is you will have to stay involved in the business and potentially reach certain performance targets or do certain things to show or to secure that the business keeps going as it's supposed to go and keeps making money as it's supposed to do. And so that's really what the negotiation is about. You want to get your cash and and leave and they want you to stick around and make sure everything keeps going and keep everyone happy and keep everything moving for as long as possible. And so that earn out period is an important part of the negotiation. Mine was quite long, it was three years. Other people have uh, shorter um, earn out periods. Another aspect um, of the negotiation that you uh, will typically have is how much of the sale of your business is going to be dependent on performance after the sale. So this can be structured in lots of different ways. But in short, what the um, person buying the business will want to do is to say, well, I'll give you this much money, but only if, you know, you do make this much profit in year two and year three or year one after the sale or whatever it is. And so there are ways of setting performance targets that would then trigger part of the money that you uh, get for the sale being released. And there's lots of different ways in, in which this is done. Now, I guess my situation was slightly different because the company that bought my business was a big multinational business and they wanted to really fully assimilate this small business into their way of doing things. They wanted us to take on all of their software and all of to move into their offices and to uh, take on all their procedures and so forth. So it was much harder to set performance targets in the same way as you might do if you continued to keep a business running as it is currently managed. And so um, my uh, earnout was really about staying involved in the business and helping integration. Uh, but other people will get performance um, metrics that will, de- you know, that will really determine the amount of money that they get um, out of the sale. Um, and that can go on for one year, two years, uh, even longer. I think the key thing to say about those negotiations and the way that that goes is that you really need advice. Um, I really felt like I needed advice. We were very lucky to find a very good advisor, a consultant who'd helped um, negotiate a number of um, sales of businesses. And he knew all the issues that come up with this kind of process. And he was able to really um, give us a good understanding of what was going on, what the key issues were for us and what you know we needed to do so we could make very informed decisions. And so I would strongly recommend paying good money for a really good advisor in this process if you do um, intend to sell, because you need advice about things like warranties. You know, what kind of warranties or guarantees are you going to have to give or are you willing to give as part of the sale? How will you get paid for this sale? Will it be in cash or will it be in shares in the new company that is buying your business? And will those um, be options that depend on specific performance targets or will they, will it just be given to you as part of the sale and what proportion will be? These are all really important issues. Um, you're going to need advice about things like insurance. And of course, you're going to need advice about how to negotiate the price as well. So I would say, you know, it's hard to go into more detail about the negotiation um, in a short podcast like this, but it's really worthwhile getting good advice from someone who has a lot of experience doing this. Another question I got was about how long it takes to sell a business. And this is something that I think um, I've probably covered in the other questions, but um, the the negotiation process itself can take quite a long time. Um, You definitely need to build up a relationship first and that, took years for me in in terms of developing relationships with uh, partnering companies. 
Then there's the negotiation itself, which in my case took over a year. Once the negotiation is complete, you have a period of what's called due diligence, where the company that's buying your business wants to come and check you out and find out whether or not what they're buying is what they expect to be buying. And they want to look at your accounts and they potentially want to talk to your clients and all this kind of stuff um, to basically see whether or not there's anything dodgy that they don't know about um, that could affect the value of your business. Um, that didn't take too long for us. It was about three months. Um, and it's a weird process because it's done sort of secretly, but it becomes increasingly obvious um, what's going on um, as you're doing it. In terms of the overall time, in my case, it took, as I said, I thought it was going to be a five-year process building up the company to a point where it was ready to sell. It actually was more like a 10-year process. So overall, uh, I developed the business for about seven years and then sold it and had a three-year earnout period afterwards where I had to help integration of the company before I got to a point where I could actually leave the business completely. So the last question is about life after the sale and what it's like when you have um, sold a business. And I think one of the key things that, um, that I experience, which you probably will experience too, is that process of seeing somebody else um, take over your business and do it their way. And that is really hard. It's really difficult because in our case, it was a large corporation and they wanted us to adopt all of their procedures and so forth. And what I saw was, you know, my innovative, nimble, adaptive and uh, very profitable small company get assimilated into this really, really inefficient, large scale business. Um, they talk about economies of scale in business, but actually what we, we experienced was more of a diseconomy of scale. Everything costs so much more. Our IT costs skyrocketed. Our accommodation costs skyrocketed. All of our procedures took longer. We weren't able to be as flexible in terms of our hiring and internship programs and things like that. So, you know, what my experience from the perspective of a small business owner was that it was destroying value that it was taking a really um, profitable and innovative business and, and really turning it into part of a much slower moving and less profitable large organization. And that was painful to watch because it's like, you know, you, you've worked so hard to create this business that you really believe in. And then you see another group of people make decisions that you don't think are in the best interest of the company, but it's not your company anymore. And you only have a limited amount of influence. And the people buying your company will have different priorities and different, uh, uh, different things will be important to them. So that's really difficult watching that happen. And it's something that you have to be willing to, to do if you do want to sell because you have to let go. And the, the way that people talk about company sales is that it very rarely works very well. Buying a company is a very difficult thing to do as well. And... Most of the time, it's not nearly as successful as the buying company wants it to be because it is very hard to take over a going concern and slightly change it in ways that you need to, but still keep it profitable and keep everyone happy. Um, so that's the main thing that I think that you, that you need to sort of be prepared for is that period of, of letting go and psychologically, um, you know, seeing your own creation your own company be warped in ways that you you know wouldn't have done yourself very hard to do so i hope that's useful that's just a, a quick overview of some of the issues involved in selling your business i'd be really interested if you have thoughts about this or feedback about it or experience yourself and i'm happy to um, talk more about it so i'd, I'd love any feedback um, by email or on the website and thank you so much for listening Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.